So I'm Chris Pollock. I dairy farm uh, here with my parents and my wife here at Pollock View Dairy. We milk 160 cows and farm about 800 acres. We grow corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, canning peas. This year we have lima beans for the first time. And almost all of our land is in the Green Lake watershed at the high end of it. I got involved with the Green Lake Association when they started to plan the first farm field day. I kind of had an aha moment when I was there because we got talking about soil health and I started to realize, you know, maybe we can we can do better. I don't buy fertilizer to, to fertilize the bottom of Green Lake because I don't grow any corn there. I grow it out here. Uh, I want to be the guy that goes, look at what he's doing. He's, he's doing something right. It is Green Lake. It's part of the economy here in the local areas. They'll try to stay profitable, but try to just look at things in a different way that from an environmental standpoint will be better in the long run while improving soil health and hopefully making this farm better in the future. So Stephanie Prowitz from the Green Lake Association encouraged me to get involved with this demonstration farm network, the Upper Fox River watershed. So I was picked as one of 10 different farms that is in this watershed. We're all trying to do different things to help better protect water and keep more of our soil in our fields. It's a great opportunity to network. We're all trying to achieve a common goal, and that's to protect the lake and, and its tributaries. And by talking to other farmers, what did you do that worked? Uh, what did I do that worked? When you have real farm information and data and you can talk to a farmer about it, that is hugely influential. And all of us can play a role in that in a different way. We have access to some equipment that we don't necessarily have to buy, but we can try find something that works and that's something that hopefully we can tell other farmers about that they can utilize that potentially could work for them too. But every farm's a little bit different. We've been doing some no-till with soybeans. So this is uh, first year no-till on, on this field. We wanted to no-till all our soybeans this year and again if you can keep the soil and nutrients in the field where they belong that keeps it out of the lake. We've got about 20 acres right now that hasn't been tilled in eight or nine years. So this year was a field I've had no-till for about uh, probably shoving 10 years. We've been doing some things with cover crops in recent years. I need topsoil. It takes literally years, decades to build an inch of topsoil and you can lose it in a couple of really bad storms. There's that potential if I can put some fences out there that maybe I can run some beef out there for a while in the fall feed some livestock for maybe a couple months or maybe even a couple months next spring too and they're in turn making me beef for not a lot of money. We've had a couple little misses that weren't perfect um, but we learned from them so we can do them better next time. We're trying to educate consumers at the same time that we're trying to produce food for them. So we have to reassure them that this is a good safe product. We wouldn't send this out for you to eat if we didn't feel comfortable eating it ourselves. So my wife stumbled upon a piece of notebook paper of goals that I must have wrote when I was in high school. I had hoped to buy some land to add to the farm and start to take more responsibility in the farm. But the longest goals were 20 years out, which that would have been last spring. I have three kids now. I hope there's an opportunity for them to farm here 20 years from now. They have the same opportunity that I had farming with my parents. What this farm might look like in 20 years, who knows? Farms are changing, farms are growing, farms are diversifying. My dad and I have talked about what my grandfather would think about if he walked onto this farm now, how it's changed from when he was here. The changes have just been incredible with technology and, and the genetics of the, the herd and, and how we do things, the size of equipment we use. I want to be a farm that's respected for how I farm. Farmers are ultimately some of the biggest environmentalists you'll find anywhere.